QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Bank Feeds Matching Invoice to Deposit. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, the open windows list, those checked off, the open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, let's open the P and the L, the profit and the loss, change that range from 010122 to 123122, and then customize going to the fonts to the numbers changing it bringing it up to the size of 14 okay yes okay let's go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the balance sheet customizing it first and then doing the changing of the ranging 010122 to 123122 fonts to the numbers are gonna be a changing and there's 14 okay yes and okay we're going to open up the bank feeds, which are in the banking drop down. Bank feeds, bank feed center, which would only be there if you had bank feeds turned on, which we have done in a prior presentation. I'm going to go into the unrecognized area. We're now going to focus in on the deposits once again. I'm going to sort here and then by the deposits. And we want to think about uh, deposits now that are going to be a little bit more complex. So let's go back to the home page. We've been focusing on, uh, in prior presentations, the deposits would, would be related to an industry that would be easy as possible to use the bank feeds to then create the financial statements from something like gig work. So we've been waiting until something actually clears the bank and then recording it as income, which with, in essence, a deposit form, which we made through the bank feeds. So if you got paid by like YouTube or something like that, if I go to my profit and loss, we can wait till that clears the bank and just use the deposit form in the bank feeds to create our income accounts. Now we're gonna think about situations that are more complex and how the bank feeds will fit in to either a cash-based system where we have to use the create sales receipts, which we'll talk about in the future, or an accrual system where we're gonna have an invoicing process, meaning we have to do the work first, invoice the client, and then track the accounts receivable. We're going to start with this one. We're going to think about the invoicing process. And it's got actually three steps to it generally, as you can see. You've got the invoice, you've got the receive payment, and then you've got the record deposit. So then the question is, well, where could the bank feeds fit in to this process? So we also have the estimate, just so you can see how the estimate might fit in. So if we're doing an invoice, first of all, we're on an accrual based system, meaning we're going to do the work first, such as might be done in a bookkeeping department or in landscaping or something like that. And then we're going to have to charge the client for the work that is done with an invoice, which is going to increase an accounts receivable account, not related to cash clearly. Therefore, it's, it's not going to be related to the bank feeds. And then we're going to have to receive the payment, possibly tracking and kind of following up with the customer, tracking it within the accounts receivable to kind of collect on it. Once we get the payment, we could use this form to directly put the payment into the checking account. But by default, usually it goes into an, a clearing account called undeposited funds. And then we take it out of undeposited funds and put it into the uh, deposit here into the checking account. The reason we have this added step, which you might not see or be as familiar with when you're doing financial accounting in like a classroom, is because we wanna make sure that if we have multiple payments, like multiple cash payments, for example, which we're gonna deposit into the bank together, we don't wanna have separate receive payment 
payments on our side going into the checking account because then we won't be able to match them to what clears the bank because when we put the money into the actual physical bank, we deposited multiple receive payments in one lump sum. That's how it needs to be seen on our side so we can tie it out to what we've seen on the bank, either with the bank feeds, which can help us with the bank reconciliation or with just like the bank reconciliation process. So uh, then the estimate could happen if we're in a system where we're gonna, we're gonna try to see or estimate what the charge will be. So we're gonna take up a job, we set up an estimate, and then we might use that estimate to create an invoice noting that the estimate doesn't actually have a financial transaction related to it. So we're not gonna get into the estimate here. We're gonna start at the invoice. So how do the bank feeds fit into this process? Normally, you would do the whole process. You would say, okay, I'm gonna have the invoice that's gonna increase accounts receivable. The other side is gonna to go to sales. Then we're gonna receive the payment that usually is gonna be increasing uh, the, the cash account of undeposited funds, the clearing account and decreasing accounts receivable. And then I'm gonna deposit it in our system into the bank account here, as well as physically make the deposit into the physical checking account, either cash in the bank or an electronic transfer or whatever it is. Then I will wait till it clears the bank. And once it clears the bank, I can match out the deposit we made in the system to what went through the bank feeds. However, you can imagine a system where you're gonna say, well, maybe I can make the invoice and then wait till the, the deposit clears the bank and use the bank feed to tie out to the invoice. Or maybe I can have an invoice and then receive the payment, putting it into undeposited funds and then use the bank feeds to, to, to tie out from the undeposited funds to make the actual deposit. So there are a couple of variations we could have. Let's first think about that first variation. I'll make an invoice and then see if I can use the bank feeds to wait till it clears the bank to then uh, record the deposit, uh, tying it to the invoice. How would that look? Let's go to the bank feeds. Let's check it out. Let's just pick a deposit that we're gonna use here. I'll pick a deposit. I think there's a couple Amazon ones uh, that we still had that I might be able to use. Here's an Amazon, let's use that one. It's only $9, that's okay, $9.58. So $9.58, I'm gonna go to the home page. I'm gonna create an invoice. And let's say this is just for customer number one again on let's say 10, let's say 10, five. And I'll make a new item. Let's make it a service item. So I service item one, tab, setting up the item. It's gonna be a service item and then I won't even put an amount. I'll put the amount in later. It's not going to be taxable. I'm not going to deal with the sales tax. And then I'm just going to say that it's going to go to sales revenue account. So then I'm going to say, okay, it was 9.58958 non-taxable item. Let's just double check that, that I have the right amount. 958, it was on 922 here. So the invoice, let's make the invoice before the deposit on 9.15, uh, 09.15, 09.15.22. Okay, it won't let me do that. 09.15.22, okay. So there we have it. So when we record this, it's going to increase the accounts receivable because it's an invoice by that 9.58, the other side's gonna go to sales. Note that if there was sales tax involved, then we could you can use the invoice, of course, to calculate the sales tax, which is nice. And, and that would just put in place the sales tax component with it as well, increasing the amount that we expect to receive, increasing the sales tax payable. If we had inventory tracking involved on a perpetual inventory method, then this would also be decreasing inventory, recording the cost of goods sold. But our main focus here is just to see how you can tie out the invoice to the to the deposit. So I'm going to say, okay, let's save it and close it. Uh, save and close. Let's see what that did. Let's go to the balance sheet. Now we've got accounts receivable, double clicking on that. And that increased by that 958. The other side went to the income statement, the P and the L it's in the sales item. So there's the 958 there. If I go back to the balance sheet, we also have the sub ledger that's going to be tracked reports drop down 
customer and receivable. That's gonna be the customer balance detail, let's say, from, well, here's here's the customer balance detail, the 958. So we're getting now our detail on the accounts receivable because we're gonna have to follow up on that and collect on it. That 958 matches here. You also have that information in the customer center, customer, customer center. And we've got this customer number one where we have that 958. So we can follow up with the customer. We can send out reports and everything that we would normally do. Now, if I go back to the homepage, the next step is that they're gonna pay us. When they pay us, then normally I would I would enter this transaction here and say we have customer, customer one, and there's the two invoices. So I would choose this invoice and so on. But maybe I can just use the bank feeds. I can say, hey, you just pay us electronically or whatever. And then we're gonna be able to tie it out to the invoice using the bank feeds. I won't go through this process. I'll just enter the invoices. And then when they pay us, I'll tie it out using the bank feeds. So how might that work? If I go to the bank feeds then, we see this amount right here. It didn't match it automatically, which sometimes it might do if I had entered the data input in you know, the reverse order, meaning I entered the invoice and then we had the bank feeds here, the, you know, be, but it might not always be able to match because you can imagine what it has to be able to match based on. The invoice would have to basically match out just the fact that we have the $9.58 amount in order to pick up the right, you know, the right matching. So, but if it's an electronic transfer, we can see, you know, who we got it from and everything. So we might be able to match it up pretty easily by then saying the drop down. let's go to match. So we're in that same field, but this is the edit more details. This is the match. And there's the two potential matches that we have. This is the one we want, the 958. So I'm gonna pick that one up. And so then when I record this, it should do the next step, which was to receive the payment. Now it's kind of, it's going to be interesting to see what QuickBooks does. I believe it does a two-step process, meaning it records the receive payment, puts it into undeposited funds, and then takes it out of undeposited funds and records the deposit, as opposed to just using like a receive payment that goes directly into the checking account. So let's just check that out. If I say save to the register, so now let's go and say, okay, what did it do? I would expect it to do the second step right here, right? It would do that second step, but this second step usually by default puts it into undeposited funds, not directly into the checking account. Although we could use that form to put it directly into the checking account, but I think it's gonna do that and then also make the next step. So it records two transactions, recording the actual deposit, taking it out of undeposited funds, putting it into the, the bank account. The reason I think this way that they do it is kind of nice. One reason is that when you see the activity in the checking account, most of the increases will be with the deposit form. Whereas if you deposit directly into the checking account with this form, within the deposit detail form of the checking account, you're gonna have some receive payment things, which, make, which muddies things up a little bit in terms of just your details, not a big deal. But if I go to the balance sheet, Let's see if that is indeed the case. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna customize up top. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna say that I wanna to go to the advanced settings because I wanna see all active cells, even if it has a zero in it, if there's activity, which I would expect un, uh, unearned revenue or undeposited funds to show up if I do that. So, so if I go down here, we're gonna say, oh, there it is. There's undeposited funds. It's at zero, but now I can double click on it. So if I double click on it, then you can see here that uh, it entered a sales receipt. It looks like there's, there. well, here's the sales receipt. No, it entered a payment. <laughs> so there's the payment. And so if I double click on that payment, then uh, there it is. So that's the standard uh, payment form that is usually the next step after the invoice. So there's the customer one, it clicked off this invoice, which is tying to this invoice that we made, closing this back out, closing this back out closing this back out. And then the other side there usually goes to the accounts receivable, double clicking on it. So now the accounts receivable has gone back down with the payment, closing it out, closing it out. You can also see that in the customer center. So in the customer center, we now have the invoice and the payment, the invoice now showing as paid. 
So that looks correct. And then I believe it made another transaction decreasing undeposited funds with, uh, with the, the uh, payment and then the deposit form. The deposit form decreasing undeposited funds here and then moving it from undeposited funds up to the checking account. So it actually recorded two forms here. Where's that nine? What was it? Nine something? Let's see if I, do I need to sort it by deposit there? I think that's it. That's the one, isn't it? That one right there. Let's see if I could sort by, yeah, that's the one. So there it is. So you can see that's a plot. That's a system that you could set up. So I'm going to go back to the homepage. So once again, we entered the invoice and then we waited till it cleared the bank and we used the bank feeds to still record actually two transactions. It recorded the receive payments, decreasing the accounts receivable, other side going to undeposited funds, and then it recorded a deposit, increasing the checking account, decreasing undeposited funds. So next time we'll, we can also think of a system where we'll look at it where, where we will uh, enter the invoice and then receive the payment and then see if I can match the the uh, deposit to the receive payment recording that last transaction, which is another possible method you could use. And then of course we can we can just do the whole thing and then match the bank feed to the deposit that has already been made, in which case we wouldn't record another transaction, but would just be using the bank feeds as a kind of bank reconciliation tool. All right, let's just 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 take a look at our uh, at our trial balance. Just just, just take about that. This is gonna be 01, 01, uh, 22 to 12, 31, 22, and then customize it. And we'll go to the fonts and numbers and change it up to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. Just remember the trial balance, great tool when you're entering like invoices and then uh, that have sales on it, as well as balance sheet accounts so that you can kind of tie everything out and look at everything in one account because you got the balance sheet accounts on top of the income statement accounts without all the subtotals.